A severe drought in Texas has uncovered some 113 million year old dinosaur tracks, usually underwater in a riverbed. Experts say the footprints in the Dinosaur Valley State Park were left by a nearly seven ton reptile and have been preserved in stunning detail. Dr Timothy Rowe is a paleontologist at the Jackson School of Geosciences at the University of Texas and he joins us now from Austin. Timothy Rowe, welcome. So how would you describe the quality of these tracks? Well, the tracks are, are ex quite deep. Uh, it's unusual to find them that deep. And, and it gives us a lot of detail of the surface of how their feet looked, not just how the bones looked, but how their feet looked when the soft tissues and the skin were wrapped around them. And we can see the claws at the tips of their toes. And that tells us that these three-toed dinosaurs were predatory dinosaurs kind of a smaller version of Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, and, and, um, and it tells us what they were doing, which is what dinosaurs mostly did. They were standing around and walking around slowly. They're not running or leaping in these uh, uh, trackways, but uh, nice to see more of the uh, feet than we usually do. Yeah, and so people were aware of these tracks before the water receded, were they? Uh, some of the tracks, at least, yes. Uh, the um, Dinosaur Valley State Park is really kind of unique. Uh, the Paluxy River crosses the trackways, and so it's a wonderful place to visit. You take your shoes off, you roll your trouser cuffs up, and they give you a bucket with a glass bottom, and you put that in the water and walk along and, and look for the tracks through the water. And when the water dried up, it was not terribly surprising that uh, we could easily see a lot more tracks than you would on a normal afternoon when they were covered with water. And had you been there yourself and been through that process of looking through the glass bottom buckets? Oh yes, oh yes, many times and I send my students there. And, uh, there are more tracks on the, the ledges, on the, the sides that you can look at, and make casts of and things, but it's really quite of a, sort of a quaint uh, experience to take the glass bottom bucket and wade the river and see how many tracks you can find. Yeah, and now you've seen the, the photos of what it looks like with the water away. Are you keen to get there before, before the rain comes again so you can see these tracks without having to look through the glass bottom bucket? Yeah, I'd love to uh, go up there, but they're predicting more rain tomorrow. <laughs> right. More flooding you better get your Dallas skates area. on. So, yeah, yeah, maybe if, there's, if they aren't covered by the weekend, I'll be able to uh, take a quick run up and have a look for myself. And yeah, so tell us a bit photos. more about this dinosaur, the Acrocanthosaurus. Well, Acrocanthosaurus is probably the animal that made the uh, track, so we can't be 100% sure because these are just trackways. And uh, uh, But the Glen Rose limestone, this formation that holds the trackways, has produced uh, several skeletons or partial skeletons of Acrocanthosaurus. And the, me, the name means tall spines, and so it would look something like a smaller version of Tyrannosaurus rex, have three fingers instead of the two that Tyrannosaurus had. And as per its name, it has tall spines along its back, tall, shortening towards the front, rising towards the back, and then diminishing towards the, uh, the, the tail. And um, they gave it a bigger appearance and profile. There's no obvious mechanical uh, explanation for the tall spines. So maybe this is the product of sexual selection and they're trying to look bigger and impress their, their, their mates. It's an impressive dinosaur uh, all around and uh, rare enough uh, compared to the abundance of the trackways. And that's not an Acrocanthosaurus in the background there, is it? You've got a statue, you've got a little figurine of, of something there, of a dinosaur uh -oh. there behind your right arm. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's a sauropod. And in the same trackways, we find tracks of these giant sauropods. And so Acrocanthosaurus is 15 feet tall and six or seven tons. But the uh, sauropod from the Glenrose Formation, a thing called Sauroposeidon, uh, it was on the order of 60 feet long, and probably weighed 40 tons, and it left trackways on these same mud flats. And there's at least one very dramatic trackway that was found in 1938 that, that shows a sauropod or sauroposeidon, probably 
sauropod trackway and an acrocanthosaurus trackway right alongside it, and it gives the appearance that the big theropod, the big predatory acrocanthosaurus, was tracking the uh, herbivorous uh, sauropod. It's a, one of the most sensational trackways, I think, in the world. Yeah, so this, uh, you're, you're kind of reconstructing kind of like in CSI kind of way what kind of could have been happening at this time uh, with the Acrocanthosaurus uh, uh, preying upon this other dinosaur. Is that your theory as to what was going on here? Well, it's, yeah, that's the most likely uh, uh, scenario. You know, these, uh, the, the mud flats that take these tracks aren't um, muddy for long. They bake in the sun. And so the idea is that the, probably these animals were walking at about the same time uh, to leave tracks of comparable thickness or depth. And <clears throat> so I think it's, it's more than just a, a wild idea. Yeah, and so this is the Dinosaur Valley Park, I think it's called. So there's lots of lots of uh, paleontologists heaven they're there. Uh, when, tell yeah. us uh, when did Acrocanthosaurus get wiped out? Well, uh, we have records of it going up to about 105 million years. So it was replaced by bigger and bigger uh, predatory dinosaurs. So it had a range there of uh, somewhere around seven or eight million years and then gave way to things like, uh, well, eventually Tyrannosaurus, Gorgosaurus, and some of the other famous uh, charismatic giant uh, meat-eating dinosaurs of North America. But the Acrocanthosaurus is one of the, uh, the first that was really big and uh, it's, I can't wait to, uh, well, be careful what you wish for, but I can't wait to find a uh, new skeleton, a complete skeleton of Acrocanthosaurus. Yeah, and th they all got wiped out at one stage. There are very popular movies depicting dinosaurs roaming <laughs> once again. Do you think they'll ever be resurrected in some form? Well, um, if, you, uh, if you look at birds as, as, as living dinosaurs, as many of us do now, then uh, Dinosauria as a evolving lineage never went extinct. Uh, Birds are the living dinosaurs. But if you're thinking of things like Tyrannosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus or Sauroposeidon, dream on. <laughs> okay, we will continue dreaming on. Okay, Timothy Rowe, thanks so much for having a chat to us from Austin, Texas. Thank you.